Well, welcome, everybody. Um, we are almost concluding four years of programs with Twitchy Sunday mornings with Twitchy Woman, which is amazing. Uh, it's been so wonderful getting to know all of you over the last four years. Uh, we have a wonderful speaker today who was rescheduled from December when she had the flu. <laughs> so I want to welcome Amanda Hare. Uh, she is the medical science liaison at Rune Labs. And let me just tell you a little bit about her. She's a doctor of nursing practice who started her career as a bedside nurse in the neurosci neuroscience intensive care unit after receiving her bachelor's of science in nursing from the uh, University of South Carolina. She spent over eight years as a bedside nurse in the neuro ICU, taking care of critically ill patients who were suffering strokes, as well as spinal cord injuries and brain tumors. She then decided to advance her career since finding her passion in caring for those with neurological conditions. She graduated from the Medical University of South Carolina, received her doctor of nursing practice, and she went on to care for Parkinson's patients and other movement disorder related conditions at an academic center of ex excellence. She is currently the medical science liaison for Rune Labs and practices general neurology at a pr private practice on a part-time basis in Charleston, South Carolina, where she lives with her husband and two children. And welcome, Amanda. And as usual, I'm gonna ask you to put your questions in the chat because we're gonna have a very large group today. So put your questions in the chat. We will answer them as we go along if, if it fits in. Otherwise, we'll wait until Amanda fin finishes her presentation and then you can ask all the questions you want. So Amanda, it's all yours. Three. Um, so I'm Amanda Hare. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, I did re have, have to reschedule from December, but uh, so excited to be here. Um, I am the medical science liaison at Rune Labs. Uh, I found them serendipitously. Um, I loved taking care of Parkinson's patients, uh, still do to this day, but it really was something that um, I think is not the same. You've met one Parkinson's patient, you've met one Parkinson's patient. And to me, I could individualize a lot of care per patient for what they were telling me. Um, and of course, a lot of this is subjective. Um, not everyone is um, as attuned with when they take their medications versus when certain things happen. And so a lot of times when I was trying to figure out how can I best help this Parkinson's patient in front of me, uh, I wish there was something more objective. You know, what is their step length? What um, is the severity of the tremor? When is the tremor worse? When do dyskinesias kick in? When does the patient have dystonia? When does the patient feel off? And what off means to them? Is it motor? Is it non-motor? So as you all know, Parkinson's is extremely complicated. It involves a lot of different systems, your GI system, your sense of smell, it can impair your swallowing. Um, and we don't have a disease modifying treatment. And so my objective every time I'm in front of a patient is to teach them more about the disease and how the disease works so that they can take more control of the disease. Um, and we know one of those things is exercise and exercise is the only thing that's going to slow the progression. So there's a lot of um, autonomy in controlling your Parkinson's disease with exercise. And it's something as a clinician that I'm not able to do. I'm able to prescribe medications. I'm able to educate, but I can't actually physically take a rock study boxing class for you and you get that benefit. So when I found Rune Labs, I was so impressed with who they were, what they were trying to do. And this is something that we haven't had. We don't have these objective measures um, with tremor and dyskinesia. So this is something that I feel very passionate about. Um, I get to work with our product team, our engineers, um, our patient advisory board, all of the people in our company to keep it patient-centered and to keep it focused on what is going to help um, users best and what is not so helpful. Um, not everyone is very tech savvy. So how do we make it as easy as possible for any patient or any user uh, to use Strive PD? So that is what I'm going to talk about today. I will share my screen here and we will get started.
Okay. So Rune Labs is the company. Strive PD is um, the app that we have created. So basically what we did is all of this started out um, based on research. So we took all of that data and we made this clinical care model. And so what we did was we took a bunch of data collection, um, remote monitoring. So everyone sees their clinician maybe every three, four, five months. We know that every day can be different. So what has happened in those months time that we are losing sight of or didn't capture? So we're taking all that remote monitoring, we're taking all that uh, data collection, and then we're also having uh, everything that the, the user is reporting, and we're making that a routine care delivery system. So there's two cohorts. One is the clinician side of things, and one is the patient side of things. So I will go into that more now. So this was actually created um, for individualizing Parkinson's care. Not, again, not every Parkinson's patient is like another. 30% of patients don't ever have a tremor. Um, and so we are a HIPAA compliant disease management care tool. We enable you to track all of your symptoms and medications in advance of a clinical visit. A lot of these things are passive, meaning you don't even have to interact with the app. You just keep your phone in your pocket, wear your watch and go about your day. And then all of these insights are shared back with you and to your neurologist or movement disorder specialist. So I can't not give a presentation without mentioning Aura. Aura is uh, a woman living with Parkinson's. She is the creator of this app. Um, so she has given it to Rune Labs and entrusted it um, to us. And we have built what it is today. But she is such a wonderful person who was really struggling with keeping up with her disease and all of the symptoms. Her father also had Parkinson's, so she really felt like this app needed to be uh, developed. Um, she talks about, you know, writing on legal pads and trying to make Excel sheets, and she could never really figure out what is correlating, what's actually um, influencing my symptoms, what behaviors, what, um, you know, if I exercise this day and have more tremor, is that always true? Or if I eat a high protein meal, does it mean I'm going to have um, more off time because of the interaction with protein and my levodopa? So in 2018, like I said, um, she um, gave this to Rune Labs and we relaunched this, this companion application. She sits on our board. So we have a patient advisory board of... Um, about four or five different Parkinson's patients who really keep us true to what the user is going to benefit most from, what's most meaningful and what's most helpful. Um, so we always say knowledge is empowering and self-improvement keeps us striving. So we are very thankful to Aura. So again, this is precision neurology. So on the left side of your screen, you will see the user side of things. So you're gonna get presented with a my day view. It's gonna show you how much tremor and how much dyskinesia you've had. So this is getting captured by just wearing the watch. It is passively collected. You don't have to do anything other than keep the watch charged and keep it on your most affected side. So if your Parkinson's symptoms are mostly right-sided, you would wear the watch on your right. I know sometimes that feels different because we usually wear a watch on the left, but you do want to wear it with um, on the side that you have your most symptoms. And on the right hand side is the clinician view. So we are partnered with a ton of clinicians around the United States, and they get to see, um, just like you do, an in-depth view of how much tremor and dyskinesia you've had. Is it going in the right direction or is it actually getting worse? They look at different mobility metrics and sleep metrics if you've been wearing your watch to bed. And so your clinician can kind of get a good understanding and compare how you were doing when you last saw them four months ago and how you're doing now. And so there's a ton of different metrics that I'm gonna go over that this app um, can, can be used for. 
So again, this watch automatically records your symptoms. Some of the mobility metrics are captured through the phone, which is why we want you to keep it on you. Um, so anywhere in your pocket and a purse, we want it around waist level so that we can get the most accurate uh, mobility metrics. And all of this is to learn from patterns and behaviors um, specific to you. And what this does is it improves your understanding of these patterns, correlations, behaviors, and you can then better communicate that to your team. Um, your clinician has access to your symptoms. They can get all of that information and kind of get a better understanding of when you're maybe, you know, having wearing offs of symptoms, should your medications be changed? Um, should you have a new medication involved? Maybe you logged a symptom of um, cognitive fog and one of the medicines you're on is, uh, that's one of the side effects. So it's really good to keep track of all these things and for your clinician to have access as well. Okay. So this is the Strive PD journey. So in the beginning, like I said, they're going to automatically uh, capture tremor and dyskinesia. And then right under that is the next most important thing, which is that exercise pattern. So we are integrated with the Apple Health Kit. So if you are already recording um, yoga or running or uh, stretching, all of that doesn't have to be recorded twice. It goes from the Apple Health Kit right over into Strive PD. And what we want to do is get you on a consistent maintenance streak. So nobody can exercise 10 days in a row. That's just, you know, not going to happen. We know that it's very important to have your body rest and to not push yourself. So there is a... Um, button of rest. So rest still counts as a streak. So you do exercise a day or two, you rest, and you see how long you can keep that streak going. And then on this third slide here, we can track the days you exercised versus when you took your medications versus what symptoms you've reported. And then we can gain analysis of your daily symptoms that are passively recorded through the watch. So we're going to give you a nice graph here to show your tremor over a day period, a week, two weeks, a month, and three months so that you know as you're going, how are things how are things um, doing for you? You know, do you feel like things are getting worse and now your data can can show you that as well? Or do you things are do you think things are improving? And you actually see that objective measure, the tremors less or your dyskinesias are less. So it's very important that you have a good understanding of these uh, symptoms and correlations and patterns so that, you know, when you are sitting in front of your clinician and maybe only get a, you know, visit every six months, you're prepared, you're ready to talk about what's been going on in your journey, what are the most bothersome things and what you've noticed with using the app. Okay, so there are multiple streams of data um, and one is from the health kit. So we are already getting lots of good stuff just from Apple itself. We're getting sleep, mobility and gait metrics, the um, activity Apple workout all goes in and, and integrates. And then we're also getting heart rate metrics. And then what Rune Labs partnered with Apple with is making a movement disorder kit. So this is where you get objective measure of tremor and dyskinesia. So this watch can differentiate between tremor and dyskinesia. It has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, so it is able to measure tremor and dyskinesia. Rune Labs did get FDA 510K clearance. Uh, June of 2022. Uh, so this was a longitudinal study that we did, and we compared watch data with movement disorder specialist UPDRS scores. So basically, when the watch was saying tremor, dyskinesia, a movement disorder specialist validated that. And then we also have that self-reported data. So we're putting your medication schedule in, making sure that you're as adherent as possible. So if you're taking medicine four times a day, the watch will buzz and say, okay, you're levodopa, it's time to take it. And then you're able to stay on better track. 
You can report any symptoms from a headache, incontinence, dystonia, lightheadedness, fatigue, anything that's happening during that time. And the goal is to say, is there a pattern? Is there a reason this is happening? And is it medication related or is it disease related? So it can kind of tweeze through some of the things. And then of course, all the activity that you're doing, um, you don't have to manually input it into Strive PD. You just have to document it in the health kit. So I do want to mention that Strive PD is free to download. It's in the Apple App Store. It's only available right now on Apple on the iPhone. So we're not uh, using Android. And um, we want you to have an iPhone um, SE or 11 just to support all of the features that we offer. Um, and then the Apple Watch is a series five or higher. I will say the Apple Watch, the SE version is $250. Um, a one-time buy and it, you know, connects with your iPhone. Uh, it's probably the best bang for your buck to support all of this software. So we're trying to make this as low burden user experience as possible. We don't want this app to bother you. We don't want this app to take away from what you're already doing. We don't want you to be frustrated with it. We want this to be as easy to use. So any Stride PD user, uh, we hold a support group as well. And we're able to take questions. We're always doing um, research and feedback. So we really take everything that uh, users are telling us. And because we're such a small group, we're really able to uh, be nimble and quick with things and uh, help launch new features to make it easier to use. So on your symptom logging and motor diary, you can log any symptom or side effect. So we know that a lot of times medications can make us feel nauseous. Uh, medications can cause um, constipation. So you can put anything in there um, as pop, you know, as you feel um, entitled to. And then medication and supplement. So again, we're going to put your medication regimen in. If you take a PRN medication, like an extra levodopa or Enbresia or Apican, something that you use for off time, you're able to log that as needed. Any influence. So like I mentioned before, a high protein meal, getting either a good night's sleep or not a good night's sleep, and then any activity that you do. Um, this also does uh, support patients who have DBS. You don't have to have DBS to use this app, but if you do, there is a place for you to document if you changed your DBS setting and why you changed it. Uh, a lot of times I talk with patients and they've changed their DBS setting and I say, you know, what were you going up or down for? And they say, oh, that was a couple months ago. I can't remember. This is an area for you to log you know, I went up because I was having breakthrough tremor. The note section is very popular. Um, if anything happens that you feel like you want to keep track of, you want your clinician to know, you can put it in the note section. Um, some people put things like they got a pacemaker. Some people will put that they saw the dermatologist and got a skin check. Um, others will just use it as a diary of their journey. If they've just started a new medication, they'll say day one of medication, uh, not feeling much effects. You know, they kind of use it as a tracking, um, to kind of keep up with anything that's going on at the time. And then the motor diary, um, we do track any on or off time. So if you're having trouble with your medications kicking in, you can actually log on from the time you took your medication and we can see how much time your, um, your medicines are taking. It can be very erratic, but we want you to use this app to say, okay, are things working? Is my regimen really helping what I'm going through or do I need a different therapy? And I know we're all, um, you know, thankful for all of the medications and all of the, um, other options we have. I know there's some subcutaneous pumps coming down the line, but we really want to make sure that we're not waiting for you to see your clinician, that you're noticing these patterns and behaviors and saying, you know, something 
is doing great and something is not, and you can actually reach out to your clinician and talk with them more um, before you see them next. The one thing I do want to call out is some of our uh, users were saying it was hard to log items. They had to go into the app. They had to log an item. They had to type. Sometimes people um, were off. They were having a pretty bad tremor. They were having a lot of dyskinesia. They were having dexterity issues. So we enabled a Siri logging with Strive PD. Um, so I won't say her name, but if you say, hey, no name, please log Brady Kinesia or log rigidity. It's an easy way for you to capture that in your app without having to go through multiple steps. So this is an example of some of the feedback that we get from users that make the product better. So we just um, enhanced all of our activity logging and all of the features that we have in our app. And we did this because we know it's the only way to slow the progression of Parkinson's. And a lot of times patients uh, aren't in an exercise routine, don't have the motivation, um, just aren't interested. It's very hard for them. Some people, you know, are able to do rock steady boxing and others, you know, are not able to, but there is activity for everyone to do. And I think it's very important. Um, so our primary objective in really modifying our app to capture as much activity as possible is to, you know, engage in healthy activities. And we know that the impact of exercise on your day to day is going to really matter and it's going to really show in your symptoms. So we have things to choose from like rock steady boxing. If you did flexibility or stretching, which I think is very underrated. Um, I think Parkinson's patients should, should stretch every morning for 10 to 15 minutes, loosen up those muscles, um, walking. Um, and there's that rest day in there. Like I showed you before, it's always important to rest and take care of yourself. But we really wanted to focus on exercise. We know that that is an important key to uh, helping symptoms um, with Parkinson's patients. So again, this is showing you all of these graphs together. So you're logging all of your activity streaks here and they go right into your day. So you can see this patient takes their medication, their trimmer goes down here and that's perfect. They're able to work out and doing great. If we put that over a two week period, could we see that on the days that you're working out, the trimmer is much less? Can we get that pattern and that correlation? One thing I will say is some people don't have dyskinesia, but the watch will say that you do. The one thing this watch isn't very smart with is differentiating between exercise and dyskinesia. So any kind of movement like brushing your teeth, playing the piano, exercising can look like dyskinesia and that is a false positive. So if you see dyskinesia on the app and you're not experiencing dyskinesia, that could be one of the reasons. We are partnered with Rocksteady Boxing. Um, all of the Rocksteady Boxing coaches that want to participate with us have been trained. Boxers are allowed to share um, all of this data with their coaches so that coaches can help um, you know, with balance or maybe they need more um, cardiovascular help. And so they are tracking all of their rock study boxing classes, how their classes are doing for them and what they need to tweak um, when they're in rock study boxing. So we're very excited to be partnered with them. Um, all of their coaches are very excited and are getting a lot of users together using this app and tracking that exercise and really monitoring um, as time goes on. I think with the pandemic, we saw a big drop in exercise classes. Everyone had to stay home. Um, what's really cool about our app is even if you have not had a watch, your phone is still tracking mobility metrics. And we can get those metrics all the way back up to three years. So it's very interesting to be able to say, all right, I started this new rock steady boxing program. 
I just completed LSBT big therapy. I want to compare six months from now, three years from now to, um, you know, before and, and look at the present data and say, where have I been? Where have I come? And so um, even if you don't have the app downloaded, all of that's within that Apple Health Kit. Uh, so it's really interesting for users to see all of that data pre and post. I've had a lot of patients who have started using the app um, that are newly diagnosed and they're floored that they start carbidopa levodopa, get on that good LSVT, uh, big therapy exercises, and they're actually doing a lot better than they were three months prior to their diagnosis. So we want to give that encouragement um, and that understanding of all of your hard work is paying off, and we're seeing that in your data. So this was a couple things that people had to say um, about Strive PD. Um, Deborah said the fact that Strive gives you a notion where you can make a note about anything you enter was help was useful. I could tell the doctor explicitly when it occurred and how long it would last. It was also a good emotional outlet to be able to talk about what was happening through writing. And Dave said, I realized I'm learning more about my tremors, how it works and what sets it off. It's not regular. I'm learning about the external factors that might affect the tremor. In other words, if I sit down and watch TV for an afternoon, and the next day I go on a hike in the afternoon, I can see how it affects the tremor. So we do have a clinician partnership with over 260 clinicians, 150 clinical sites. Um, if you want to look to see if your clinician is partnered with us, um, I will show you where you can look at that on our registration form. So there is a drop down, and we do show all of the clinics um, that are partnered. So if you see your clinic on there, um, we should be partnered with them. And there, there's a lot of them. This is the QR code. If you want to scan the QR code to get to Strive PD to register, you can do that or you can go to strivepd.com and click the register button. And what that does is it helps us put all of your data and information into the right organization where your clinician is practicing so that they have access. So remember, free to download on your app store on your phone. Um, and then if you want to also have the watch, you can. A lot of people don't have an Apple Watch they still use the phone to track their medication adherence, their exercise, their mobility metrics. Um, so the Apple Watch is another extension to capture that tremor and dyskinesia metric. Um, and like I said, there are tons of uses. This is a toolbox. Um, so again, you don't have to use every feature, but these are some of the things that Strive PD can do. Um, I think the biggest impact that I've seen is patients start to report things and their clinician looking at this data and saying, wow, you're always rigid or stiff and have pain in the morning. Maybe we need to up your, your carbidopa levodopa at night, or maybe you need that as needed medication first thing in the morning because it takes your medicine 30, 45 minutes to kick in. So I have seen a lot of clinicians use this data to um, support their decisions in medication management. Um, if clinicians and patients alike are seeing that their mobility metrics are going down, maybe it's a time to do a refresher course of LSVT big or have physical therapy started. We've seen a lot of patients with COVID, the flu or another illness um, or hospitalization, and it's hard to bounce back from that. So they see those mobility metrics or maybe their symptoms get worse. Um, so it just gives you a better insight on what do I need to do? How do I need to be better managed? And it's not just up to your clinician. It's all empowerment for you to see every symptom, every correlation, and every behavior. Um, and we want to support that. We want to make sure that we're giving you lots of knowledge and feedback. 
right now we are working on um, some educational videos so that if certain things are logged, for instance, we know that your blood pressure can drop when you have Parkinson's. So we're making educational videos on what is orthostatic hypotension? Is it disease related? Is it medication related? Um, how do I check my blood pressure? How do I know if my blood pressure is dropping? And so we want to give you as much feedback and things for you to do without your clinician so that you guys can work better together and um, get that much further and get ahead of things before they become either very bothersome or before you have a fall. And um, we don't want any of those. So yeah, that is kind of the basis of Strive PD. Um, I would love to take any questions or comments. I know there's a few in the chat, so I'm going to stop sharing here. Okay. Okay. The first question, are there plans for a non-Apple version of the app? Not at this time. Right now, we're only um, supporting iPhone but hopefully in the future, it's just not something that we have on the timeline for now. Will this be available in the UK? We are looking at expanding, yes. Um, I'm not sure exactly when, um, but there are some um, clinical trials that we are involved in. So uh, you might have heard of stem cell therapies and other trials um, that are looking for those disease modifying therapies to help Parkinson's and the disease progression. Um, some of those are outside of the US um, that we're doing, but not right now is it available, but we, we are looking into that. I have trouble with documenting my DBS with changes in amplitude. Um, I have heard this before. Uh, someone was telling me actually the other day that they tried to document, um, you know, that they changed it to 2.1 and it kept reverting back to the old amplitude of like 2.0. Um, the one, one thing that you could do if, if that's troublesome or it's not working out great is just to log it in the notes section. Another question is, can we log other exercises, outdoor walks, ellipticals? Yes. So you can log all of that. Um, those were just a few examples, but you can put other and type in exactly what you did. If it was Tai Chi, maybe it was a Zumba class. Um, like you said, I know when I wear my watch, I'll be walking in the neighborhood um, while my kids are riding bikes. And it says, are you working out? And you can start your workout. Um, so all of that is possible. What other questions, thoughts, what can we chat about to see how this can maybe help you? Kim? I just wanted to thank you for mentioning the dyskinesia because I do have the watch, <laughs> excuse me. And when I look, I know my dyskinesia is not near what it what it's registering as opposed to my tremors. So it's, it makes me feel better when you said that there's other things that it, it uh, reads as dyskinesia. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I do think that is important. Um, you know, I we never want this app to scare you or say, oh my gosh, do I really have dyskinesia? I'm not noticing it. Um, so we we do try to give as much information as possible that there are some false positive readings on the dyskinesia. The and other I also, I'm sorry, I also want to mention before I mute myself, this is a motivator for me. It's mm -hmm. a motivator for the exercise. It's a motivator for taking my meds on time. So, you know, I want people to realize that sometimes that watch just clicks or vibrates and reminds you. Thank you. I know we get so busy with our day and it is so important to keep that medication schedule so that those dopamine levels don't drop and you're not having this yo-yoing effect. Um, one thing I do want to mention about the tremor, uh, capturing of tremor. Right now, the watch is capturing rest tremor. So a tremor when you are at rest or not doing anything. Again, if you are extremely active, um, you're, you know, never sitting down, 
sometimes your trimmer may look less than you think it actually appears. So again, the watch isn't quite smart enough. Um, unless you're resting, that's when it's picking up the trimmer. If you're out and about um, and moving a lot more, you may have less trimmer than that's recorded on the watch than you really have, but it still gives you a good benchmark uh, to go from. Thank you, Kim. That's That's very good to hear. I've got a couple questions here. Um, the site says it's important and I appreciate that, but what privacy protections are in place? So we're HIPAA compliant, just like your doctor's office, your hospital. Um, we do not share data. This isn't stored somewhere that people have access to. Um, so when you log on to the app, it's going to ask you if you want to share the information with your clinician and you can decline that. If you just want it for your information, that's totally fine. Uh, you don't have to share it. Um, but everything HIPAA compliant means that, you know, your data is safe and we take that very seriously. So that that's such a great question. Another question is, does the app go into detail explaining how to set things up and use? <laughs> yes. So um, I will stop sharing for just a second. I know you wanted the QR code, um, but I want to show you quickly our website. Um, what's really amazing is we have four or five patient specialists who are able to help you via phone call or Zoom. But what we have right now is a user guide. So let me share my screen again. Okay, so this is the page where you register, strive.group, which is where that QR code takes you, um, this blue register button. But here is all of the information that you need. So to get started, which is setting up the app, all of that good stuff, um, we have tutorials, videos, breaking it down um, one piece at a time. Janice is a wonderful patient specialist of ours. So this helps you walk through uh, creating an account, um, any kind of support that you might need. So check out this page first. If you're still not able to figure it out, um, you can email us. So I believe that's in the fact information. Let's see. Yep. So if you would like to learn more or need help, you can email us at support at strive.group and we're happy to help with the setup. Um, how about non-motor symptoms? Great question. Um, so anxiety, constipation, um, fatigue, all of those things are not passively tracked, but they are symptoms that you can log. So if you're nauseous, um, if you're having more anxiety or depression, you can log that. So you can log it in the app, or again, you can use Siri to help log those non-motor symptoms. Um, a lot of patients experience anxiety or other non-motor symptoms right before their next dose of medication, or, um, you know, maybe it's not medication related at all, but you can log all of those symptoms in the app when you, you know, you just say log a symptom. Do we have to activate sleep tracking on the watch? Yes. So in order for you to enable the, um, the sleep data monitoring, you have to set up a sleep schedule. So you have to say that, you know, you typically go to bed around 10 and you typically wake up around eight. Um, I have my watch set up that way. I never go to bed at the same time every night. I never wake up at the same time. So um, the watch can tell if you're just in bed resting and there are some metrics to show that the watch is able to accurately depict if you're asleep versus awake. And so what I think is really important about sleep is, you know, do you have early morning awakenings? Is it hard for you to get back asleep? Um, and is that a pattern and something that you want to bring up with your clinician? So we know sleep is very important. Um, when I don't sleep well, I don't do the best the next day. So 
um, you can see how sleep really affects your symptoms and, and how you're feeling overall. Okay. The next question I'm trying to get on the app, but it's keep saying my email is already in use. So, um, if you've already set up a, an account prior to, um, that could be an issue. Um, honestly, that would probably be a support question. Our engineers are pretty good at looking at emails and stuff like that. So I would encourage you to use that support, um, at runelabs.io. The, um, it's, I'm the one that asked the question. Yes. Uh, I thought I, I, I have the app downloaded on my phone already. Okay. And um, I have the Apple Watch, but I never know how to use Drive PD. So um, the thing is, I, I didn't remember if I registered before, so then I went back out and I registered, said I forgot password and I set up a new password. And then that didn't work. It keeps on saying my email is already in use. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to um, troubleshoot a little bit, just send us an email. Um, we're happy to call you and walk you through um, just to see what's going on. And we can try to help on our end. And the website is strivepd.com? Yes. Yeah, so um, strivepd.com. Yes. Okay, thank you. Or. Okay. Um... We have a couple more questions. Inter is there an interface to the Aura Ring? Um, right now, there is where we can pull from third-party um, metrics, like from an Aura Ring. There are some, you know, the Aura Ring is wonderful. Um, it's reliable data, but because we can't validate that data because we don't know how they collect it, we don't show it at this time, but we're looking at, we know, People have aura rings and, and it's, it is very good data. So we are looking into integrating with that. Um, some people don't like to wear the watch to bed. I personally don't like to wear the watch to bed. Um, so what I was doing, you know, is I would wear it a couple days a week just to see if my sleep was improving, you know, potentially after you take melatonin. Um, I can't wear it every night. So an aura ring is something that is a little less bulky feeling on you. Um, so we are looking into that to see if we can't integrate with the aura ring. Do I have okay. to check yes to all user consents in order to use the app? The app won't let me go further without consenting. Yes. So you do have to consent that you will share your data with us so that we can, um, you know, have it if you want to share it with your clinician. If you don't want to share it with your <laughs> don't want to consent. Um, if you'll just email that support at runelabs.io, um, they can help you so that you're, you know, only consenting to sharing it with us and not the, not your clinician. Okay. Any other questions? I'm trying to enter medications and several of my medications are not there. What do I do about that? Yeah. So, um, sometimes, um, like, are you trying to log carbidopa, levodopa? Can you give me an example of a medicine? Bupropion, which is Welbutrin. Okay. I tried, I tried to put both of them in, neither one showed up. Okay. I definitely know that's on our list. I've seen it many times. Um, again, I am not the troubleshoot support guru. I apologize. <laughs> okay. um, but if you email us, uh, we're more than happy to help you. Or it may be beneficial. Um, there is a video on putting in your medication schedule. There may be something in that video that's a tip and trick. Those are brand new. I haven't even watched them. But our patient specialist team just made those. Um, so they're very up to date and they're very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mine seems to have stopped recording a few days ago. Did so I there, do something wrong? There could be a lag up to 48 hours. 
Um, the okay. one thing that we tell you is to try to, you know, log out of the app and log back in to see if it can resync. Um, sometimes okay. the, the permission got turned off for some reason. There's a mobility um, motion permission that has to be toggled on. Um, and that mm -hmm. is in that, those user videos as well. But if you see that your data stops recording, you may want to close out the app, open it again. Um, sometimes if you don't open the app for an extended period of time, that can cause some data issues. But um, as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi, everything should be uploading in real time. What's okay. the Aura Ring? The Aura Ring is a uh, sleep ring. It's a metric. You wear it on your finger and it measures, um, I think it goes actually into sleep stages. Does anyone, I don't actually use an Aura Ring. Does anyone else have any more insight into that? Let's ask Google. <laughs> I have an aura ring. Um, it uh, it does measure sleep and it measures uh, activity. Um, it gives you a score every day. So based on your performance the day before, you have a score, a readiness score. Um, the higher the better. It's based on how good your sleep was, how much exercise you got, etc. It's good, but it's like on the sleep. It uh, it's never quite right. I mean, it's, but it's very in-depth. It tells you your REM sleep, your deep sleep, your, you know, yes. when you were up, when you were, when you were restless. So, mm -hmm. and it's easy because you, you know, it's just a ring. So it's not ever going to bother you. You can sleep in it and exercise. And like, if you have an Apple phone and you're, and you're doing a uh, walking, sometimes it's not going to register it because it's not near your waistline or whatever, you know? So uh, the ring takes care of that problem. That's a good point. Thank you so much for that extra information. What was the okay. uh, uh, website again, support? Was yeah, so the website is, let me pull it up again here. Um, support at runelabs.io. This one says uh, strive.group. We have a couple different ways, um, but support at strive.group. Thank you. Okay. Is this available in Canada yet? I, I feel like we're only U.S. right now. We have been talking so much about extending um, I want to say that there are some people who actually live in Canada, but get their care in Washington state um, that are using the app, but you do have to have a United States address, I believe, to sign up for Strive PD right now. Um, but we are looking to, to expand into Europe, Canada, the UK. Um, that is one of our big initiatives. So um definitely hang tight for that. It's, it's coming. Did you say that if you have an American address, you can use that even if you can sign up, even if you're not living in the U S I believe so. It's something with our, the way the app connects, um, I, you know, engineering has told me a million times and I can't ever <laughs> get it down, but, um, there are a lot of people that I know live in Canada that travel to the U.S. to get their care for Parkinson's, and they use the app, so you can try it for sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so let's stop sharing your screen, Amanda, and we will put my screen back up. Awesome. So I want to thank you. This was wonderful. And I have a lot of questions and I'll speak to you later about them because we don't need to go into my personal questions. But um, I think this was really, this is the future uh, for all of us, you know, for being able to control the disease, see where we're at. And I think it's wonderful to be able to compare how you were doing three months ago to how, you know, we, I feel it, you know, I can say, I feel that I'm getting worse, but here would be the evidence. 
you know, and I think that will make a big difference in how we are taken care of by our physicians, by our care partners and everybody else. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and hopefully you can stay on a few minutes later to answer any more questions that people have later. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So next Sunday, not next Sunday in two weeks, I can't believe it's February already. And I spelled it wrong, but uh, February 18th, we will have Tremble, Tremble Clefts with Karen Skip, Skipper. So if you want to sing, this is the day to join us. We're going to have a lot of fun singing. Um, and then on March 3rd, Kristen Meldrum, Meldrum, the author of How to Reduce Parkinson's Symptoms Through uh, Exercise, this, the book that just came out, uh, will be speaking. And I'm planning, I'm hoping that a couple of the people who are featured in the book will join us as well. I know that one one friend of mine who's in the book is definitely going to join us. So this will be a lot of fun. And then on March 17th, we're going to have our fourth anniversary of Sunday mornings with Twitchy Woman. And ladies, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support for the past four years. It's been an amazing ride. Um, and you have all enriched my life um, just by participating. It's been so much fun. So I look forward to seeing you then. Um, but one of the special things we're going to have, there's a book called In My Shoes that was written by a number of women who are young onset Parkinson's. And um, the information is on my website now, how to sign up for this one, but you can download the book. And uh, it's a very interesting. You don't have to be young onset to read the book. So we're going to have a lot of fun that day. And I want everybody to bring their favorite shoes to show us, you know, or the shoes that you can no longer wear. <laughs> And uh, we'll all celebrate our shoes. So um, next slide. Okay, so we have you. If you are not receiving the blog, you can sign up for it. Just go to twitchywoman.com and you can sign up for it. Uh, if you're not, it, you should all be receiving the weekly newsletter. If you're new today, you will be added to the list. Um, so I hope that you will continue to join us. I know we have a number of newbies today. Next slide. Okay, uh, if you want to get a t-shirt or one of these great mugs, you can go to the Twitchy Woman Sweat. You can check it out on our website um, and just always doing a plug, what can I say? Or you can download the, uh, the QR code that's on there. Next slide. Um, so I know that there are a number of people on today who have been participated in our peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program, which has been recognized all around the world. It's it's really wonderful. If you're newly diagnosed and looking for someone to talk to who can answer your questions, who can help you through, get over that hump of dealing with your, your new diagnosis, or if you've had Parkinson's for, Parkinson's for a while and want to help someone else learn to live well with Parkinson's, uh, check out our peer support program and fill out the appropriate um, application and we will make sure you're paired with someone. And next slide. So we have two chat groups. Uh, we have our Anything Goes on Tuesday mornings, and I know there's a, a nice following for that one. Shelley Savoy and um, Darlene Santos run that one. And then on Sunday mornings, we have our Twitchy, early Sunday mornings, we have Twitchies Without Partners. So if you are a single person and want to be part of that, just let me know. Um, we will add you to the list. And I think we have one more slide. And we have three private Facebook groups. We have one for Twitchy Women, which has been very active lately. There's been a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, we have Parkies with Peloton. So if you ride a Peloton, join our group. And then I just added a Twitchy Care Partners Facebook group and just put in Twitchy Care Partners and it should come up. Uh, you have to, you know, it's a private group. We only have six or seven care partners. So if you want your care partner to be part of it, Sign them up on Facebook. Um, we would really like to grow this group. And next slide. I think it's our last one.